the CPI, which is the most commonly looked at gauge of inflation, uh, declined from 4% to 3% last month, which is a pretty notable 1% annual decline. Mm -hmm. um, that certainly is good news for the economy, but also for Biden, um, who, you know, he's been trying to promote with this Bidenomics push all the good spots in the economy, and the biggest of which is the labor market and right. the low unemployment. But the kind of missing piece of the puzzle um, has obviously been inflation, and Republicans have been hammering hard over that. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by economics reporter Zach Halishak. Zach, President Biden's gotten some good news as he's touring the country trying to promote Bidenomics. Talk a little bit about inflation and where we stand with that right now. Yeah, he got a sort of one-two punch of good news this week um, in the form of the Consumer Price Index Report and the Producer Price Index. Um, the CPI, which is the most commonly looked at gauge of inflation, uh, declined from 4% to 3% last month, which is a pretty notable 1% annual decline. Mm -hmm. um, that certainly is good news for the economy, but also for Biden, um, who, you know, He's been trying to promote with this Bidenomics push all the good spots in the economy, and the biggest of which is the labor market and right. the low unemployment. But the kind of missing piece of the puzzle um, has obviously been inflation, and Republicans have been hammering hard over that. Um, so any sort of uh, disinflation is good for him mm -hmm. um, and for his, his agenda going forward. Um, and then the second report that came out this week was uh, the PPI report, and that's that gauges wholesale inflation. And it was even lower than most economists expected. It fell to 0.1% at an annual rate, which I think most were predicting it would be somewhere around 0.4%. Um, so that definitely, you know, surprised the upside there. Uh, and I think you're going to see the administration really touting those two reports in the next few weeks and months, um, you know, until the next report, and we'll see what what shows up in that. But sure. Well, like an Olympic ice skater, President <laughs> Biden would like to stick the soft landing. And so yep. for the moment, it looks like based on the unemployment rate and what's happening with the inflation rate, they have a good story to tell. Exactly. And it's looking more likely um, than six months ago that this will actually occur. And, and just to be clear, soft landing is when the Fed is able to raise interest rates and inflation is able to fall without right. triggering a recession or more broad based economic downturn. And spike in unemployment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and we just haven't seen that spike in unemployment. Uh, the last uh, jobs report, I think it came in just over 200,000 jobs added. That was the slowest pace of employment growth, I want to say since 2020, mm -hmm. but it was still strong. I mean, it still showed that jobs are being added right. um, and the unemployment rates now at 3.7, which I mean, it's a little higher than the old, the low it went to 3.4 um, sometime in the past year, but it's, it's mm -hmm. still a historically very low level. So it's looking more likely that this soft landing scenario could play out. Um, and I think just six months ago, m most economists would have told you, yeah, there's no way this is really it's just too hard of a of a, a path to walk to, to pull sure. it off. Yeah. Kind of hard to thread mm -hmm. that needle. But even as inflation is coming down, housing prices, it's a somewhat different story. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic playing out in the housing market right now. Um, last year, I, around July or so, uh, most economists said that the housing market entered what they characterized as a housing recession. Mm -hmm. um, housing prices were falling pretty quickly, especially in some major metro areas. Uh, Austin comes to mind, San Diego, places out in California and the West Coast. Um, and that's sort of reversed. And I think a big part of that, that trend and why house, housing prices are heating back up, um, Black Knight, which is a private firm, just said they hit a record uh, this path, past month. Um, a big part of that is because as the Fed raises, raises interest rates, mortgage rates go up as well. So it makes it more expensive to buy a home. Um, and during the pandemic, when the Fed slashed rates to near zero, uh, people were gobbling up homes at you know sub three percent mortgage rates, and right. now um, they don't want to sell those. So existing homes are, are there's less inventory, less supply, um, and so that's driving up the you know when you have less supply, the prices are going to go up to meet the demand. Um, so you're seeing like uh, new home sales are going up um, unexpectedly, and then housing prices as a whole are going up in response to that. And you're also seeing more construction being spurred to kind of make up for those that that loss in the market from people sitting on those low mortgage rates even now. Full house or fuller house? Full house. Thank you, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> 
You can read Zach and the rest of our policy team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.